Hey everyone, welcome back to 8 Level Lessons Online. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Alright, uh, I think by now a lot of you guys will be already heading back to school. Uh, if not, you guys are on alternate you know, schooling days and, and, and whatnot. But I'm still going to carry on with uh, my weekly upload. So I'm going to be moving on to our next part of our math content series, looking at this thing called discrete random variable. So it is still a part of statistics. Uh, those of you guys who have uh, learned statistics already, you guys will have already learned what this chapter is, right? It's actually such a simple chapter that I don't think this video is going to be very long uh, and it's going to be just really just the simple things because DRV is actually one of the easiest parts of stats that you definitely need to score. But unfortunately or fortunately, it is still part of his syllabus that you need to know. All right, so we're going to go through what DRV is. And then after this, we're going to look at binom distribution as well as normal distribution, which kind of like extracts a bit of information that you need to know your prerequisite knowledge you need to have from this chapter of discrete random variable all right discrete random variable is actually very simple it is basically giving you a range of values and all you want to do from that range of values to find data right so we're going to be finding what data is uh, in terms of things like your expectation of x or your variance of x or even possibly your sigma right so these are all very very general uh, sigma is in your standard deviation so these are all the general types of data that you want to be extracting from a certain set of values that your uh, question actually gives all right so firstly you always have to remember that the sum of all probabilities is equivalent to one so this is going to be a key um, kind of like result that you need to always have so the sum of all x values when you have a certain probability is always going to be equivalent to 1. So this is very, very important because when you actually add up all the probabilities later on, usually discrete random variable will ask you to find a certain probability of a certain value occurring. If they do that, you will always know that the total of all probabilities occurring is always going to be equivalent to 1. So from there, you can always very, very easily just work it out. Alright, so the first thing um, I'm going to give you guys is actually a table so that you guys have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So let's say if we have a table over here. Okay, I'm just going to draw in random the, this line. Okay, it may not be perfectly straight. Okay, it looks relatively straight. Alright, I'm just going to write in certain values. So this is just a sample that let's say the question chooses to give. So they will usually give a certain variable. Let's say X stands for the number of chocolates in a bag. Um or a number of red chips as compared to uh, the total number of chips in the bag. So let's say if x equals to minus 2, for instance, that's what the data gives you 0, 1, and 2. Right, and let's say that the data actually gives you, uh, the question gives you this data, 0 0.3, 0. Let's say 0 0.2, 0. Maybe say 6. Right, maybe not 6. Let's say the question gives you a 0 0.1 instead. All right, and let's say the last one is 0 0.2. Alright, so let's say the question already gives you what the probability of certain events occurring is going to be. And they ask you to find this imaginary value here. Let's say they call it D. All right, so they ask you to find what D is. It's very simple because right from the first result that we have already have is that the probability of everything added up together is going to be 1. So very simply, you know that 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus D is going to be equivalent to 1. So all you need to do now is just to subtract everything and bring it to one side. You will find that D will equal to, so you've got 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1 is 0 0.5, 0 0.8. D will be equivalent to 0.2 as well. So it's very, very simple. Okay, this is what happens. What, what I'm talking about by your first result is that the probability of everything down here is going to be equivalent to 1. So this will be how you find the probability of another value okay, in, in a given data set. So this is one way to do it. Uh, so this is one of the ways that discrete random variable actually acts. Right, so the next thing is that then what if the question asks you for further results? So they ask you to find data from this given set of data um, or asking you to find certain results, right? So one of it could be they are asking you to actually find the expectation of x, right, from this given set of values. So the expectation of x is actually very, very simple. It is going to be the sum of 
or your x values multiply by x times the probability of that event occurring. Right, so for instance, in this case, if they're asking us to find the expectation x of x from this given set of values, it is very simple. You're just going to multiply everything together. So first you would have minus 2 times 0 0.3. And then you're just going to add everything together. Right, so you're going to take this first value of your event occurring and you're going to multiply it by its probability. So from there, you would very simply have minus 2 times uh, 0 0.3 plus minus 1 times 0 0.2 plus 0 times 0 0.2 plus 1 times 0 0.1 plus 2 times 0 0.2 Alright, and so from here you can actually very simply work it out to give you this answer which is going to be your expectation of x Alright, let me just work it out real quick for you guys So you have got minus 2 times uh, 0 0.3, this will give you minus 0 0.6. Let's write it out here. So this will give you negative 0 0.6 plus 0. plus negative 0 0.2 plus 0 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.1 will give you a uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, or that'll be negative 0 0.1. So this will give you an answer of negative 0 0.3. Alright, so this is going to be how you would do it. So it's actually quite simple. Um, it is very simply just going to be your your expectation okay, of x is going to be everything, okay, the event of a certain thing happening. And let's say the event is when x equals to minus 2. What happens is that when you add uh, all the different probabilities of it occurring, which would be minus 2 times 0 0.3 in this case, and you're going to add every other event that is occurring, that would actually give you the answer of your expectation. So in this case, it should be minus 0 0.3. That is the answer here. So expectation on X basically means uh, when uh, all the different events are occurring, what is the sum total of all the different probabilities of all of them combined? Right, this is basically what the expectation of x is going to give you. All right, so after this would be if the question asks you for the variance of x. So the variance of x, it follows a very specific formula, which is the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x whole thing squared. So this is what your variance is going to be. So all you need to do is to just simply sub in the values that you have found on top and then you'll be able to get this answer. So when they say the expectation of x squared, it will be something like this. So expectation of x squared. If we're using the values that were on top, it will be minus 2 squared. So you're going to be squaring the x value, not the probability. Right? And after that, the rest of it will just follow suit. It will still be the probability that follows which should be 0 0.3 plus the next one, which should be negative 1 square now times the probability, which is 0 0.2 and then plus so on and so forth. All right, so we're going to be looking at this same set of that values over here. But now, because it's an expectation of x square, you are going to be squaring this x values on top. So all of these x values on top here is what you're going to be squaring. So it becomes minus 2 square, minus 1 square, 1 square, and 2 square. Right? Quite simple, right? So this is basically how you would be able to find. And then after that, once you have added up everything, so let's say this is after you add up all the squares, you would minus off the expectation of x whole thing square. So this part on the minus of this expectation whole thing square will be where you have already found it in your previous part which is why it's all always a leading up, okay, your variance. This would very simply be the previous answer, which was negative 0 0.3. So you just take minus negative 0 0.3, whole thing, square. This would give you your answer over here of your variance of x. All right, so this is how you do it. Very, very simple. So you just need to follow the formula, right? Variance of x is just e uh, bracket x square minus 
the whole thing bracket expectation of x square. That will be how you find it. All right, the last thing that the question could possibly ask you to find would be if they ask you to find sigma. So sigma will be very simply the square root of your variance of x. This part is extremely simple, but you first need to find the variance of x, and then after that, you just need to square root it, and this would be your answer to three significant figures. So that is how you find your sigma, which is your standard deviation. So all in all, this entire part on your um, discrete random variable is actually extremely, extremely simple. All you need to do is just follow the steps of, firstly, getting this set of data. So find just remember to plot this, uh, if you call it like a table or, or a diagram, um, to actually plot all your different values when a certain event occurs, what is its associated probability? Once you have that attached to it, to find the expectation of x would be very simple. You just need to take that event occurring, multiply it by its own associated probability, and then add up all the different values together to get your expectation of x. And after that, to find the variance of x, you just need to follow the formula, which is just to find the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x whole thing squared. Right? I've already written it down here. This is the variance of x formula. And further, and after, the, after which, if the question does ask you to find the standard deviation, which would be sigma, you will just need to square root the entire of variance of x. And this will give you your answer. All right, so before we end off this video, I just want to go through some several key results that you must always take note of. These are things that it is going to be inherent. You need to know it. So when you have the case of variance of ax, this would actually give you a square variance x. Okay, this is when we take it out, when we take out the a. Remember, we always have to square it. This is a key result. Uh, the variance of any constant, let's say a, is just going to be 0. And let's say if the if x, so your events, x and y, are independent, we've learned this in probability before, your variance of ax plus minus by. So these are the two events that are occurring. Let's say if you have to add them up, right, in the event that you need to add them up, would very simply be a square variance x. Remember, they're independent here, plus b square variance y. So this would be how your answer would turn out to be. So this is just some key results that you just need to take note of. Expectation just works the, the opposite. So let's say if you've got expectation of ax, you take out the a, you don't have to square it, you will just have a expectation of x. If you have expectation of ax plus minus by, you do not have to square anything. It will just be the a to the expectation or a multiply expectation of x. So my handwriting is a bit ugly here. So it will just be a multiplied by the expectation of x plus minus b multiplied by the expectation of y. So these are just several key results that I think you should already know by now. So these aren't exactly say very, very important, but these are definitely going to help you out in the event that you do come across, especially for variance, uh, when you have got, um, in the case of two events that are adding up together and they're both independent, you have to always remember to separate them out and always square the coefficient of that event. So let's say in this case, a, a square, b becomes b square. Alright, so uh, essentially, like I've just mentioned just now, just to recap, your expectation okay, is always basically going to be an expected value. So the summation, right, when you sum everything together, the summation um, of all possible values from a random variable. So in this case, our random variable here is x. Right, so you're just, it's basically the product of the probability of an event occurring. Hence, in this case, if x equals to 1, you would just multiply it by its probability, which is 0.1, as I've given in this table over here. All right, the variance of x just needs to follow this formula. It is usually going to be helping you to find what your standard deviation is, which we'll learn later on in binomial distribution and normal distribution. But just take note over here that it will usually be associated to binom or normal distribution and helping you to find what your standard deviation is. Um, in those cases, which is just going to be the square root of this variance. So variance follows a specific formula of ex square minus expectation of x whole thing square. 
and sigma will just be the square root of that. And then after that, you will just need to know a bit of these key results which can help you that variance. Always remember, variance, if it comes with a value, it is going to be equivalent to zero. Uh, that means just a, just a number. Okay, any constant. Variance of a constant is just zero. But if the variance comes with, let's say, ax, the a, the number before, let's say, variance 2x, will always become 2 square x. Whereas expectation, you can take out the 2, you do not have to square it. So that is the main things that I want you to take away from this part. If not, that is actually all that I would have for this entire part on your discrete random variable. Alright, so if you did enjoy this video or you did learn something, keep be sure to give it a like as well as subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. And to share this video with your friends, right, if you think that it, is, um, it can help them at least in terms of forming your basics. Right? I've already gone through um, probability and permutations and combinations in the past two videos. I'll leave the links in the description below. Go and check those out as well because I think those are quite um, tricky and, and rather hard topics they need to master. If not, this part is really just going through your basics on discrete random variable and we'll be exploring more as we do more questions um, in, in, in the near future. So for this part, just really understand the basics of what discrete random variable is and when it comes to question, we'll see how we can apply it even better. Right, so if not, if any questions, you can leave in the comment section below or do head over to my Facebook and my Instagram to actually leave me any questions. I will always answer them. If not, that is all I have for this video. Have a good one. Keep studying hard and stay safe during this COVID period. Uh, I think school is going to resume as per normal very, very soon in like two weeks, I think. So um, hope you guys are looking forward to that. If not, hopefully uh, you will continue to check out these videos. All right. If not, I'll see you guys then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.